Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and this episode is dedicated entirely to transit. I want to talk about why to use transit, how to use transit, and all of the different modes that are offered in city skylines. Massive benefits ahead. Everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Yumble. Let's ride the train. Now, why is transit important? In no uncertain terms, transit is important because it gets sims out of their cars and into other modes of travel. If you've played City Skylines for more than an hour or two, and you've seen what happens once you get high-density zoning unlocked, you've probably noticed that traffic just goes nuts. Everybody wants to drive. It is true that sims will walk incredibly far, and they will bike even further, but without additional modes, they're probably going to spawn a car at some point. And once you get enough sims spawning cars, your whole network backs up, services can't get through, oil can't get through, it's basically how you lose the game is uh, traffic backup. A way to solve this fundamentally is to give your sims alternative options. If they can if they can walk to a bus and then take the bus to a train, that is much, much better than them driving themselves and then finding a parking spot. So I would strongly recommend using transit as it fixes all of these fundamental problems. The rest of this video is essentially going to be explaining the different modes and then providing a framework for how to link them all together in effective ways in your city. This will look different depending on how your build works, but I'm confident that you can solve traffic problems this way. Let's explore the transit options and see how they work in City Skylines. To use buses locally, place the depot and then draw your lines using the bus line tool. There's also an inner city variant. Just plop it down, connect it to a highway, and buses will start showing up. Trolley buses work the same way, though they require a special road to operate. Trams also require a special road, but they have much higher capacity than buses or trolley buses. Metro is a high capacity transit option that can be used locally. Connect the stations with track and then add lines to start the trains running. It's also a total chad that will steal your significant other. Trains are probably the most versatile form of transit in the game. Place two stations locally and connect them with tracks just like the Metro to form a local transit line. Or you can connect it to an inner city track to allow intercity trains to drop passengers and tourists off at the station. But also, there's a cargo variant. Connect the cargo variant to inner city tracks to receive intercity cargo. But additionally to that, connect that cargo station to another local cargo station, and without drawing lines, the two will ship trains back and forth to one another. Harbors can receive intercity passenger ships by placing it on your coast within range of a ship line. There's also a cargo variant for intercity cargo shipping. Ferries require a depot placed on the coast as well as stops placed on the coast, connected by ferry pathways. Once the pathways are connected, you can use the line tool to draw a line between stops. Airports can be placed on flat ground and will automatically start receiving passenger planes there's also a cargo variant, and I've even heard that there's a DLC available. Blimps and helicopters work just like ferries, but the buildings are on land. Connect the depot to different stops and then draw a line with the respective transit line tool. Monorail is just metro on a stick. Cable cars are kind of cool. Place your end of line stops at the beginning and end of the line, then place your this is called a cable car stop in the middle. Connect them with the cables and the gondolas start flowing automatically. Taxis only require a taxi depot to operate. Also feel free to put taxi stands next to major areas. The taxis will actually queue up in the stand while waiting for a fare. Place a sightseeing bus depot and a sightseeing bus line so Sims can see sites they've never seen before in your city. When you're building your transit network, an important concept to consider is transit hierarchy. This is taking into account the capacity of each mode of transit, and then spacing them out accordingly, and also giving logical paths for your sims to follow. I'll give a few examples of what that might look like in a minute, but as far as the spacing goes, bus stops are relatively close together when compared to, uh, say, metro stops. So maybe, maybe that's an okay bus line. Maybe that's fine. If that's the case, tram stops should probably be 
twice as far apart as bus stops, I would say. If you're making tram stops, put them a little less frequent than buses. Then the next step up in capacity would be metro. So for metro stops, maybe there's a metro at the end here, and maybe this one is quite a ways away up here, something like that, uh, because the capacity has gone up so much. And then the next step up might be train stations. So your train stations, instead of maybe there's one train station for this part of the grid and the other one is way over somewhere else. So just pay attention to, uh, to transit hierarchy when you're deciding how many connections to make for each mode. Here is a quick transit hierarchy hypothetical. Starting from the Sims home, they can walk to the bus stop. They can then take the bus to the metro station. They can then take the metro to the airport and vice versa. Airport to the metro, metro to the bus, bus to home. Transit hierarchy, synergy, synergy. Another transit hierarchy hypothetical. Starting from home, your Sim can bike to the tram station. They can take the tram to the train station. The train station may be connected to other areas of the city or perhaps an intercity connection and vice versa. They can come back from the train station, go to the tram stop, tram stop, get on their bike, bike at home, hierarchy. Regarding the placement of transit lines, there are two main ways that people do this. The first and the way that most people discover initially is what I would call the loop. So I've got a counterclockwise bus line going on here. If you're gonna do this, I would recommend making a counter loop to go along with it. It will share the capacity of the line and also the person waiting at this stop won't have to go all the way around to get to this stop. They'll be able to get on the green line and go directly to their destination. The alternative to the loop would be transit lines that operate in a straight line, but fall back on each other. So we've got double stops all contained within the same line. The beauty of this is that you can actually intersect it with other traffic lines doing the same thing. And you get these neat transfer points. So you can see we've got a ver the vertical yellow line and this horizontal kind of purple line, but there's this transfer point between the two so that the network is then extended and you can periodically do that throughout the whole thing. There we go, another transfer point. So the red line can get to the blue line easily by transferring twice. This will scale citywide. If you extend this to your uh, entire city network across different modes of transit, um, it actually works phenomenally. Would recommend the, uh, the line method. And that is it for today. Everyone, thank you for watching. I've been Yumble. Feel free to subscribe here. Feel free to follow me on Twitch. Feel free to join the Discord. I really appreciate you watching the video, though. Thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.